Hey guys, Plonkerboy900 here and welcome back to a brand new challenge video. If you've been on this channel for a little while, you may remember I did a video recently on Emerald Kaizo. That was a challenge in which I had to use the first six Pokemon I found. Due to the intense difficulty of Kaizo, this actually took me two attempts, but spoiler alert, we did manage to pull through. I decided it would be a good idea to bring this series back, but on a different ROM hack. This time we're taking on Fire Red Omega. I've already done a GIF Pokemon run on this game, so I do know what to expect. It's not difficult in the same way that Kaizo is, but it's still a very challenging game. Let me just quickly run through the rules for you. As you might expect, I can only use the first 6 Pokemon I find. This does not include my starter Pokemon which I won't be using, and if I need to I can use HM users, but only outside of battle. As always, no items in battle, and that's pretty much it. Before we get started, shout out goes to these people, who found the Dabbing Delibird in the last video. As always, he's in this one as well, so if you see him, then just comment down below the timestamp and you might get featured in the next video. With all that said, let's get on with the challenge. I start the game picking the female character this time and call her Shiro. You know the drill, comment down below if you get the reference. I name our rival CPC because technically he beat me in the challenge that we did together, so he's now officially my rival. For those who are interested, I pick Magby as my starter, and we beat CPC in a very close fight. We get our Pokeballs and Pokedex, which means we can now catch our first six Pokemon. I go to Route 1 for our first Pokemon, and it ends up being a Sentrit. I've always liked Sentrit, but I don't know how useful it's going to be. Fur it's okay, I suppose, but nothing special. I catch it and then decide to move to Route 22, where I catch my next Pokemon. It ends up being a Mankey. Primeape's pretty fast, and has a good attack stat as well, so I'm pretty happy with this inclusion. I get the fishing rod and decide to fish in Viridian City. A water type is always a good thing, but we end up getting a Magikarp. Okay, it's not as bad as you might think. Magikarp is obviously awful, but at least Gyarados is a pretty damn good Pokemon. I'm actually pretty happy to have this on the team. I decide to look in the newly placed grass in Viridian City and we actually get a Swablu. This means we're going to have a Dragon type on the team. Altaria has always been one of my favourites as well. I catch it and move on to Route 2 where we find our next encounter. It ends up being a Shroomish. Breloom is a pretty good Pokemon too, so, so far so good. This was probably a mistake, but for our last encounter I decided to go to Viridian Forest. I was hoping for maybe like a Pikachu or maybe a newly added bug type, but uh, no, we, we, we just get a Weedle. Once again, I'm not going to go through one of these runs without getting a weak bug type. I catch it anyway and add it to the team and now we've got our full team of 6. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this team turned out. We've got some decently fast and hard hitting Pokemon, and a good mixture of types as well. Overall, yeah, pretty good team. I'm looking forward to this. I do some training and in the process get Kakuna all the way into Beedrill, which for the early game is actually pretty strong. A lot of Pokemon got buffs in this game, but unfortunately Beedrill isn't one of them, aside from a couple of new moves. I decide to challenge CPC to the left of Viridian Forest, but this fight ended up being really easy. Sentret deals with Zubat no problem, and Shroomish deals with Elekid. There's not really much more to say here. We arrive in Pewter City, so I decide to take on Brock. This fight wasn't too bad as we do have Shroomish on the team. First up is Geodude who actually survives one Absorb but goes down to a second one no problem, and next up is Rhyhorn. As with Geodude he survives an Absorb and then goes for Flamethrower but it hardly does any damage because Rhyhorn's special attack is awful, so one more Absorb is enough to take it out. Next up is Vulpix though who's actually a bit of a pain. It takes our Mankey out no problem, so I decide to swap into Sentry and just go for a few quick attacks. We get very lucky as he misses the Hypnosis twice in a row, as one more quick attack brings it down to a sliver of health when he finally puts us to sleep. He doesn't actually end up healing though, but we go down to a few more embers, so I decide to swap into Beedrill in the hopes of outspeeding, but we get put to sleep and KO'd by a couple of embers. This isn't going well, we're actually getting swept by a Vulpix. I switch in Swablu as he finally misses the Hypnosis, so one peck is enough to finish it off. The rest of his team are all 4 times weak to grass, so it was pretty much just a clean sweep with Absorb from Shroomish. Omanite goes down no problem and so does Kabuto, so it's already down to his final Pokemon Onyx. I outspeed, go for the Absorb, and we get a critical hit for the one shot. Once we got past that Vulpix, that fight was insanely easy. On my way through Mount Moon, I picked the Helix Fossil. I knew if I didn't say which one I took you'd all ask. Actually now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. We arrive in Cerulean City and I decide to do some training, and in the process we actually evolve a lot of our team. Sentra evolves into Furret, Shroomish evolves into Breloom, 
and we even get Magikarp into a Gyarados, so we can actually use him now. All of a sudden, this team is looking a lot stronger. I decided to try and take on Misty, but this ended up being a mistake. Her Pokemon are just too strong for us at the moment, so I was going to need a bit more training before taking on this fight again. I decided to take on our rival instead, which ended up being a lot more reasonable. First up is Golbat, so I leave with Gyarados, and a few tackles are enough to finish it off. And next up is Elekid, Braylon resists his electric moves, and our Mac Punch does a lot of damage in return, so it's not really a problem to deal with. Next up is Rolt, so I swap into Furret, and Scratch does about 50% as he decides to set up a double team. We don't end up missing though, and just go for a quick attack for the KO, and it's already down to his final Pokemon, Snubble. Even with the Intimidate, two Karate Chops are all we need to get the KO, and we beat CPC just like that. If only Misty could be that easy. I get the SS ticket from Bill, and I decide to take on Misty once again. Things went a lot smoother this time. First up is Staryu, so I leave with Gyarados, and our secret power does a lot of damage. She just wastes a turn going for Harden and then heals up with a super potion, but two more secret powers are easily enough to KO. Next up is Starmie, which is definitely her strongest Pokemon, so I swap into Beedrill. We get hit with a Water Pulse and it's a critical hit as well, but we do survive. I go for the Twin Needle, which is super effective, and actually it is enough to KO from full health. Next up is Psyduck, so I decide to stay in, but Twin Needle is not quite enough. She knocks out Beedrill with a Confusion, so I just swap into Breloom and go for a Mac Punch for the KO, and next up is Seedra. I swap Gyarados back in and go for a Secret Power, which does good damage. She starts setting up Dragon Dances, which is kind of scary, but I don't think she actually has any physical moves. She goes for an Aurora Beam for hardly anything, and one more Secret Power brings it down to KO range. She just decides to set up another Dragon Dance though for some reason, so we can just finish it off with one more. Next up is Togetic, so I stay in and go for another Secret Power, which does just under half as we get paralysed by a Thunder Wave. She goes for Camouflage and it fails, so I just go for another Secret Power, bringing it down to red health, and this time she heals up with a Lemonade, as we actually get the Paralysis with the Secret Power. One more brings it back down to red health and she gets fully paralysed, so one more's enough to KO. It's now down to her final Pokemon Love Disc, so I swap back into Breloom. I go for a Mac Punch for about 40%, as she hits back with an Aurora Beam, but it really doesn't do that much. We actually get outsped this turn as she goes for an Attract, which isn't ideal, but we're still able to hit the Mega Drain, but as you can see it's not even doing as much as Mac Punch did. That's because our physical attack is so much higher. Because of this I decide to just go for Mac Punch again, and it's enough to finish it off, so Love Disc goes down and we win the second badge. We face off against CPC once again in the SSN, but apart from a couple of his Pokemon evolving, this fight was pretty much the same. And by that I mean, we beat him no problem. I take on the third gym, and in the process of fighting the gym trainers, we actually evolve Mankey into a Primeape. I'm really happy to have a Primeape on the team, I really think it is an underrated Pokemon. And I'm about to demonstrate that to you right now. This Lieutenant Surge fight was pretty much a clean sweep. Fluffy's out first, so I start with our new Primeape, and we have to move Dig. Obviously Dig is super effective against electric types, so Flappy goes down in one hit, and next up is Jolteon. We do get hit with a Shockwave, but it doesn't really do that much. Dig brings it all the way down to a Sliver, and then he heals up with a Super Potion, but that's not going to save him from one more Dig. Chinchao's out next, but also goes down to just one Dig, and next up is Manetric. We get paralysed by a Thunder Wave, but I knew this was going to happen, so I actually equipped a Cherry Berry before this fight. I go for the Dig, which isn't quite enough to KO, but next turn he just goes for Flamethrower, which we survive, so I finish it off with a Karate Chop. Next up is Magneton, who pretty much always causes me problems, but not this time, as we have the 4 times super effective Dig. His final Pokemon is Raichu, so I go for another Dig, but we get outsped and hit with a Surf, but we survive with 2 HP remaining. He then just decides to go for the Focus Punch while we're underground, which isn't a problem whatsoever, and we go for the Dig for the one shot. Raiju goes down and we win ourselves the third badge. Do not underestimate Primeape. We arrive in Celadon City and before fighting the gym leader, I decide to do some training with Swablu just so we can evolve it into an Altaria. I'm pretty sure that Altaria is going to be essential to winning this fight. We face off against Erika, so I decide to put my new Altaria to good use. First up is Victubel, who takes over half from an Aerial Ace, and just decides to go for a Sword Stance so we can just outspeed and KO the next turn. Next up is Blissey, who's normally a bit of a problem, but not this time. We have Primeape who goes for Low Kick and it does great damage, but she does paralyse us. We survive an Ice Beam even with a critical hit, but we do get fully paralysed and taken out the next turn. No problem though, as we have Breloom, who's also a fighting type, so we just go for the Mac Punch for the KO. Next up is Volplume though, who actually takes an Aerial Ace really well. Not only that, she puts us to sleep with a Sleep Powder, so I have no option but to switch out. I swap into Beedrill who actually gets hit with a critical hit sludge bomb, but we do take the hit, and I hit back with a twin needle which doesn't do that much. 
We go down the next turn, but that's alright. Because Altaria has natural cure for its ability, so she's awake now. I go for one more Aerial Ace for the knockout, and next up is Ludicolo. I go for another Aerial Ace, which does well over half, as she sets up the rain. She's now faster because of her ability Swift Swim, but Surf doesn't really do that much damage at all. One more hit takes out, and next up is Blossom, who almost goes down to a single Aerial Ace thanks to a critical hit. She just hangs on with a sliver though and goes for a Leaf Blade for a small amount of damage. She does heal up with a Hyper Potion, but two more Aerial Aces are enough to finish it off no problem, and it's down to her final Pokemon Jumpluff. She sets up the Sunny Day this turn as an Aerial Ace does a good amount of damage, and next turn she outspeeds and goes for Sleep Out. What? Why? Because of this, one more Aerial Ace is enough to KO, and we've won ourselves the fourth badge already. I'm going to skip over a couple of easy fights here, those being Giovanni who didn't cause us any problems whatsoever, and our rival CPC in the Lavender Tower who didn't cause any problems either. This is where things actually did get tricky though. We arrive in Future City where I take on the 5th gym leader Koga, but this guy was so much more difficult than anyone we've faced so far. On my first attempt I couldn't even get past his second Pokemon Fortress, and even on a really good run where we get to Crobat, he just sweeps our entire team with it. It's level 50 which is so much higher than anything on my team, so I was going to need to do some training. I decide to take on the Silphco building instead as there's a lot of trainers there to fight, including our rival CPC. He starts off with a Crobat, but it's nowhere near as bad as Koga's. I lead with Primate, which probably wasn't a good idea as we get hit with a Confuse Ray, but I do land a Rock Slide for almost 50%. He goes for Shadow Ball this turn, which we survive no problem, and I'm able to hit another Rock Slide, which brings it down to red health. We survive another Shadow Ball just about, and thankfully we don't hit ourselves in Confusion, so we can finish it off with one more Rock Slide. Next up is Gardevoir, so I go into Furret, and he just decides to go for Wish for some reason, so I just go for a Strength, which doesn't do as much as I was hoping. He goes for Wish again this turn for some reason, and one more Strength brings it down to about 50%, but of course the Wish takes effect and he heals up. I'm able to bring it down to about 50% once again before we go down to a Thunderbolt, so I swap into Altaria and finish it off with a single Fly. Next up is Rain, so I swap into Primate. Rain is definitely a... So I go for low kick which deals damage based on weight and it does a lot of damage. It's not enough to KO though when he hits back with an earthquake which is obviously going to take us out but that's alright as I just swap into Breloom and finish it off with a Mac Punch. Next up is Houndoom so I swap into Gyarados and go for a Hydro Pump as he lands a crunch which does quite a lot of damage to us. Hydro Pump does well over half as well which is great as we get hit with another crunch but we just survive and I can just finish it off from there with a Surf. CPC's final Pokemon is his starter Electabuzz. I swap into Altaria to try and paralyze it, but this ended up being a bad idea. We get hit with a 4 times super effective Ice Punch, but somehow we survive with 3 HP remaining. Not only that, we go for the Dragon Breath and we do get the Paralysis. I'm able to hit one more Dragon Breath for a small amount of damage, before we go down to a Cross Chop. I swap into Breloom and go for a Sky Uppercut, which actually does a lot of damage, but not quite enough. He hangs on on red health and goes for a fire punch, but we also just survive. He doesn't heal up or anything, so I just go for a Mac punch, which is enough to knock it out, and we beat CPC once again. We face off against Giovanni once again, but to be honest, this fight wasn't that difficult either. Most of his team is weak to either water or fighting, which we have plenty of, so once again, we pretty much beat him with no problem. With all that training under our belt, I decide to take on Koga once again, but even now, we still can't win. As always, it's that Crobat which is just really difficult to deal with. I train a few more levels and try again until we finally get the win. First up is Weezing, so I start with Gyarados and go straight for a Surf which does just under half. His Sludge Bomb doesn't do that much damage and doesn't poison us, so I go for Hydro Pump this turn just to ensure we get the KO. Next up is Fortress and I don't have a Fire move or anything so I decide to stay in and go for another Hydro Pump which does about 50%. He just goes for Spikes which isn't really a problem, so one more Hydro Pump is enough to finish it off. Next up is Electrode though, which is kinda scary, so I swap into Primip and go for Dig, which actually almost takes out from full health. Of course, he does heal with a Hyper Potion, so this turn I go for Cross Chop in the hopes we get a critical hit, but unfortunately we don't. I go for Low Kick this turn just to finish it off, but he actually swaps out into Tentacruel. Low Kick doesn't do that much, so I decide this turn to go for Dig, and much to my surprise we actually outspeed. I land the Dig, and thankfully it's enough to take it out from there. Next up is Venomoth, so I swap into Altaria and go straight for the Aerial Ace, which does well over half. He does land a Sleep Powder though, so I decide to swap back into Primeape, but this ended up being a bad idea, as we get hit with the super effective Psychic. Not only that, it's a critical hit, so there is 0% chance we're surviving that. I swap back into Altaria, who's now awake, and one more Aerial Ace takes it out, and now it's the turn of that dreaded Crobat. I swap in Gyarados and get the Intimidate, and a couple of secret powers bring it down below half. 
We take a few sludge bombs no problem thanks to the intimidate and we hit another secret power which brings it down to red health and paralyzes it. Now of course he goes for a hyper potion here which is to be expected but I still hit another secret power but then he goes for a full heal to get rid of the paralysis. This didn't end up being a problem though as the very next one we actually get another paralysis. Now we outspeed and I go for the surf but it doesn't actually KO, not even close in fact. He hits another sludge bomb which we just survive but then he goes for the full restore. I go for another secret power but we don't get the paralysis this turn so I decide to swap out. I swap in Beedrill who I just figured would be the least useful in this fight but he does actually survive a sludge bomb. I go for Endeavor in the hopes of bringing him down to red health but he has Aerial Ace which we can't survive. I swap back into Gyarados to get another Intimidate so now his attack power is really low. We do get outsped and KO'd but that's fine as I send in Fur at this turn. We do get outsped but as you can see his sludge bombs really aren't doing that much damage now. Strength does okay damage but I don't think one was going to KO so I just go for the quick attack to do some chip damage as we get hit with another sludge bomb. Now strength is in KO range so all we need to do is survive one more sludge bomb which we do. I land another strength and Crobat finally goes down. This fight's not quite over yet though as there's still this Electro which switched out earlier but we have quick attack so we can outspeed it and it's enough to KO finally winning us the 5th badge. The 6th gym in comparison was a complete sweep. Basically what I did was just set up some dragon dances with Altaria and then basically just KO everything with Aerial Ace and Fly. Mr. Mime went down no problem, Gengar couldn't survive a single fly thanks to a critical hit, Jinx can't survive an Aerial Ace because the reflect from earlier is gone, neither can Alakazam, neither can Gardevoir and neither can Espeon. Yep, that was pretty much the easiest gym fight ever. Maybe Dragon Dance is just a tiny bit overpowered. Next up is Blaine, who wasn't quite so easy. He starts off with an Arcanine, so I leave with Gyarados, and go for Surf, which is pretty much a guarantee to hit KO, as he just hits back with a Fire Blast for a small amount, which is fine as one more Surf takes it out. Next up is Blaziken, so I swap into Altaria, and just go for the Dragon Dance strategy once again. He does hit with a Blast Burn, but that's okay as one Fly is enough to KO, and next up is Solrock, so I swap back into Gyarados, as we have the super effective Surf, which is enough to take it out from full health thanks to a critical hit. Next up is Typhlosion, so I swap back into Altaria and go for Dragon Dance once again. And thankfully this turn he misses the Blast Burn as I go for a Fly. It does about half, which is fine by me, as he misses another Blast Burn. I go for one more Fly, but he actually goes for Rest. Not only that, he has a Lumberry to wake him up, and one more Fly brings it back down to about half. But this turn he does hit the Blast Burn, but we're able to survive and go for another Fly, which is enough to finish it off. Ninetales is up next and pretty much does the same thing. Fly does about half as he misses the Hypnosis, but then he goes for rest and wakes up with a Lumberry, but a second Fly brings it back down to KO range and he misses another Hypnosis. He doesn't go for another rest or anything, so one more Fly is enough to knock it out, and it's down to his final Pokemon Magmar. I outspeed and go for Fly, which once again does over half, but he lands a Fire Blast, which is enough to knock us out. I swap into Primate hoping I'll be faster, but we do get outsped. Thankfully he misses the Fire Blast though, so we can land a dig and knock out Magmar, winning us badge number 7. The final gym leader is Giovanni and this time he did put up a fight. First up is Flygon so I start with Gyarados and go straight for the Blizzard because it's 4 times super effective. He does set up the Sandstorm but it's enough to KO from full health thanks to a critical hit. Next up is Rhydon so I decide to stay in as we have the 4 times super effective Surf and predictably it's enough to KO from full health. Next up is Tyranitar, so I decide to swap into Primeape and go for Low Kick, and yep, it's a one-hit KO as well. Next up is Persian, so I stay in and go for Cross Chop as he goes for Hypnosis, but our ability is a vital spirit, so we stay awake. Cross Chop lands, and it's enough to KO from full health as well. Next up is Swampert, though, which is actually kind of a beast. Low Kick hardly does anything, but he misses the Hydro Cannon. I go for Cross Chop this turn, which brings it down to about half, but he lands an Earthquake, which is enough to knock us out. I swap in Breloom and thanks to him missing a Hydro Cannon we're able to take it out in 2 Giga Drains. This fight actually took a lot of attempts and this Swampert is the reason why, it really is powerful. Last up is Cacturn so I decide to swap into Beedrill as we have the 4 times super effective Signal Beam and it is enough to KO from full health as well. Cacturn goes down and we win the 8th and final Gym Badge. Before we can visit the Elite 4 there's yet another rival fight with CPC. This one was pretty tough as well. Crobat's out first so I leave with Gyarados as we get hit with the Toxic, but we're still able to hit a Blizzard which does about half. He lands a Sludge Bomb the next turn but thanks to our Intimidate it really doesn't do that much and one more Blizzard is enough to KO. 
Next up is Gardevoir, so I swap into Altaria, and just set up a couple of Dragon Dances as he decides to set up his own Calm Minds. But we land a Fly, which does over half, as he lands a Psychic, but we actually survive. One more Fly is enough to knock out the Gardevoir, and next up is Woolrain. I stay in to make the most of my buffed up stats and go for a Fly. Much to my surprise though, it really doesn't do that much. He goes for Ice Beam which is obviously going to knock us out, so I just swap into Primeape and go for Low Kick, and because Woolrain's such a thick boy, it goes down from there. Next up is Electabuzz so I decide to stay in. He hits with an incredibly powerful Volt Tackle, but somehow we survive. I go for the super effective Dig which isn't actually enough to KO, but it does bring it down to KO range. We go down to one more Volt Tackle so I decide to swap into Breloom as we have the priority Mac Punch. He doesn't heal up or anything and it goes down. Houndoom's up next, so I swap into Gyarados and go for the super effective Surf, which does great damage as he just sets up a sunny day. Even with our water moves weakened, Surf is still enough to KO, and it's down to his final Pokemon, Sceptile. I swap into Beedrill and go for a Signal Beam as he decides to set up a Substitute. We break it with our Signal Beam though, and next turn he just goes for Leech Seed, so I'm able to hit a Signal Beam which almost takes it out. He survives with a sliver of health though, and goes for a Frenzy Plan, but we can survive that no problem. One more signal beam is enough to KO, and we beat CPC for the penultimate time. We arrive at the Pokemon League, and here's a look at our team. I'm actually pretty happy with how this team turned out. Pretty much every Pokemon has a role to play, even the weaker ones like Beedrill. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to beat the Elite Four at these levels, but all we can do is try. In the words of my dry bread, comment down below if you think I can win or not. Let's do this! First up is Ice-type user Lorelei, who is normally quite a pain to deal with. Dugong's out first, so I start with Primeape and go straight for a low kick, which is enough to KO from full health. Slowbro's out next, so I swap into Beedrill and go for the super effective Signal Beam, which does about half as he lands a Fire Blast. Much to my surprise, we actually survived the hit, which means we can just go for one more Signal Beam and get the KO. Next up is Milotic, so I swap back into Primeape and go for another low kick, as Milotic's pretty heavy as well. We do get hit with an Attract, but next turn we're able to attack, and one more low kick is enough to KO. Next up is a wall range, so I stay in and go for another low kick, which brings it down to a sliver of health. He does hit back with a surf, but we survive no problem, and go for another low kick as she heals with a full restore. This time we actually get a higher damage roll as it goes down from full health. Next up is Wigglytuff, which isn't an ice type, but I just stay in and go for the super effective cross chop, which no surprises knocks it out from full health. Lorelei's final Pokemon is another heavy ice type, so I go for low kick. Once again, she hangs on with a sliver, but she misses the Hydro Pump. Once again, I go for another low kick, and once again we get a higher damage roll. Lapras goes down, and we beat Lorelei. Next up is Bruno, who's actually a lot more difficult than in the base game. First up is yet another heavy boy in Steelix, so once again I go for the low kick. It does well over half as he hits an Earthquake, but we survive and go for one more low kick for the KO. Armaldo's up next, so I swap into Gyarados and go for Surf which once again is enough to 2 hit KO as we get hit with a Rock Blast. It only hits 2 times though, so we survive with health to spare, and finish it off with one more Surf. Next up is Donphan, so I stay in and go for another Surf, which once again does great damage. He does land a Rock Slide, but we just survive. He doesn't heal or anything, so one more Surf's enough to KO, and next up is Machamp. I swap in Altaria and go for the super effective Fly as he misses a Rock Slide. Fly hits for over half as he just decides to set up a light screen for some reason. I didn't even know Machamp could learn that move. One more Fly knocks out the Machamp and next up is Hitmontop. I stay in despite our attack being lowered by his Intimidate and go for a Fly as he actually goes for Agility and then High Jump Kick. Combined with that recoil damage, Fly brings it down to about one quarter, but next turn he goes for Endeavor to bring us down to low health as well, but we can just finish it off with a Dragon Claw and now it's just down to his final Pokemon Poliwrath. I go for Fly as he misses the Mind Reader, which is quite ironic, and Fly hits for under half thanks to our attack being lower before. He goes for another Mind Reader this turn as I go for Dragon Claw, which brings it down to KO range, but he goes for the Dynamic Punch, but we actually just survive. We do get confused though, and unfortunately we hit ourselves, which means we go down. I swap into Breloom, and my plan was to bring it down to lower health with Headbutt and then finish it off with a Mac Punch, but we get a critical hit, so Polyrath just goes down and we win. Next up is Agatha, and just looking at the levels of my team, you might be able to notice that this took a few attempts. I did eventually come up with a strategy that worked though, and you guessed it, it's just the good old Dragon Dance strat. I set up as many Dragon Dances as I can on the Shedinja as it really doesn't do anything to me, and then just finish it off with a Flamethrower. 
Next up is Gengar, so I go for the flies, he misses an ice punch. And it goes without saying that fly is enough to KO from full health. Crobat's out next, but also goes down to one fly, as does Sableye, and so does Mistrevious. We're already down to her final Pokemon Hypno, so I go for another fly as she sets up a Calm Mind, but much to my surprise, Hypno actually hangs on. Not only that, we get put to sleep, and then the Perish song that Mistrevious used takes effect. Altaria goes down, so I swap into Beedrill, who's got the super effective Signal Beam, which does great damage as she fully heals up. Thankfully we outspeed, and one more Signal Beam is enough to win us the fight. Trust me, this actually took a lot of attempts. The final memory of the Elite Four is Dragon Master Lance. He starts off with a Salamence, which is actually kinda terrifying. We exchange Intimidates, and then I go straight for the Blizzard, which does great damage, but he just hangs on. Thankfully his Aerial Ace doesn't do that much, and then obviously he fully heals with a full restore, so I go for a Surf to whittle it down and then finish it off with a Blizzard from there. Next up is Aerodactyl, so I swap into Furret. He goes straight for the Double Edge, which we barely survive, and he has the Rockhead ability, so he doesn't even take recoil damage. Our Shockwave does very little damage though, and we go down to one more. I swap Gyarados back in to get the Intimidate once again, and go straight for the super effective Surf as we get hit with another Double Edge. Thanks to the Intimidate, it really doesn't do that much, and Surf brings it all the way down to red health. He doesn't heal up or anything, and we survive one more Double Edge, just about, and finish it off with another Surf. Next up is his level 69, Lemao, Dragonite, so I stay in and we're actually faster. I land the 4x super effective Blizzard which brings it all the way down to about a quarter, but we do get hit with an Ice Beam which is obviously going to take us out. I swap in Primeape and go for the Rock Slide as he just decides to go for Focus Punch. Not sure why he did that, but I'm kind of glad, as the Rock Slide is enough to finish it off. Next up is Gyarados, and I don't really have a counter for this thing, so I go into Beedrill. This is where things get scary though, as he starts setting up Dragon Dance. I go for Twin Needle in the hopes of poisoning it, but it doesn't happen, and we go down to one Earthquake. I swap in Altaria, and after setting up a couple of Dragon Dances of my own, I go for a Fly for the knockout. I actually got really lucky here, as he just decided to spam Dragon Dance and Taunt instead of actually attacking me. Next up is his second Dragonite, so I swap back into Primeape and go for a super effective rock slide which does decent damage. He does set up a dragon dance though which is kinda terrifying, and then hits with a super powerful double edge. Much to my surprise, we actually hang on with just 6 health. I actually went for the low kick so that he wouldn't heal, but because of his recoil damage, low kick is just enough to KO from there. Last up is Charizard, but we're faster and have the 4 times super effective rock slide. Needless to say, it's enough to KO from full health and Charizard goes down, and we beat the final member of the Elite Four. All that stands between us and victory now is CPC. He starts the fight with a Heracross. I lead off with Altaria and go straight for the fly as it's 4 times super effective, and it is enough for a one shot. Next up is Warrain, and you already know how we deal with these. I go straight for the low kick which does great damage, as we get hit with an ice beam but we survive with no problems, and take it out with one more low kick. Next up is Metagross, and I don't really have a counter for this thing so I just decide to go into Altaria. Much to my surprise, we almost get the one shot, thanks to a lucky critical hit. He does hang on though with a sliver of health, and lands a meteor mash on us which does good damage as well. Obviously he heals with a full restore, but I go for another flamethrower and this time we get the burn, which is insanely lucky. Because of that burn damage we can now KO with another flamethrower, but we actually end up getting another critical hit anyway. Talk about good luck. Next up is his starter Electabuzz at level 72. I swap into Furret as he goes for the Volt Tackle, and much to my surprise we hang on with the tiniest sliver of health. I go for Double Edge which actually does good damage, but we do knock ourselves out. I swap in Beedrill in the hopes of surviving a Volt Tackle, which we actually do, even better than Furret did. A mixture of his recoil and our Signal Beam are enough to finish off the Electabuzz. Houndoom's out next so I swap into Gyarados, and set up a Dragon Dance as he goes for the Crunch. It doesn't actually do as much as I was expecting though, so I just set up another Dragon Dance and go for the super effective Earthquake. Thanks to our attack being doubled, it's enough for a one-hit KO. We're now down to his final Pokemon, Sceptile. I stay in to take advantage of our boosted stats, and go for the Earthquake, which despite being not very effective, still does about half. He goes for a Crunch, which I was sure we weren't going to take, but we survive with one HP. I have got some serious luck in this fight. I outspeed and go for one more Earthquake for the KO, and that's it. I beat CPC, and beat Pokemon Fire Red Omega using the first 6 Pokemon I find. 
As always, this sort of run is always really great fun to do. It's kind of like a casual Nuzlocke, but with just one team. As I said before, pretty much every single Pokemon had some sort of role to play. Altaria was a great sweeper, Breloom was great with its priority Mac Punch, Gyarados was just a powerhouse, and Primate was probably the best Pokemon overall. Unfortunately, Furret and Beedrill weren't really that great if I'm honest, but even they had some sort of use. The question is, would I recommend you take on this challenge? The answer is obviously yes. There's so many Pokemon available in this game right at the start that you're pretty much going to have a different team every single time. This can lead to some really interesting runs. I got quite lucky in that I had some really powerful Pokemon such as Gyarados, but that's what it's all about, it's just luck of the draw. Let me know what games you'd like me to do this run on next. There's some really good ROM hacks out there that I think would really be good fun for this challenge. Or if you've got any other suggestions, then please just leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider leaving a like, and subscribe to the channel now if you want more videos just like this. I've got plenty of other videos on the channel if you've not seen them already, so please make sure to check them out. Also, remember if you saw the Dabbing Delibird, then please leave the timestamp below, and you might get featured in the next video. As always, please consider following me on Twitter and Instagram and all that good stuff. Links will be in the description below, along with the Discord link. That's all from me, so thank you all so much for watching. Until next time.